Connecticut is a small state. In fact, it's the third smallest state in the United States, after Rhode Island and Delaware. For comparison, it's 5,543 square miles, making it just a tad bit bigger than Montenegro and about 14% bigger than Jamaica. Yet, where it lacks in size, it makes up for in population. 3.6 million people call Connecticut home, making it a state with one of the highest population densities in the country. Geographically, you'll find Connecticut surrounded by three other states, New York, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. From the Connecticut Panhandle in the southwest corner, you can reach New York City by train in a matter of minutes. So what does it look like? Well, grab your camera. As a tourist in Connecticut, you're surrounded by lush greenery in the spring, warm oranges, reds, and yellows in the fall, and snow in the winter. Connecticut has four very distinct seasons. While the north is mountainous, part of the Appalachian Mountains are in the northwest corner, The entire state is covered in rolling hills and trees, making it picture-worthy year-round, not to mention all of the rivers. The Connecticut River is one of the most famous. It's actually the reason Connecticut is called Connecticut. It comes from a local indigenous language, Mohegan Pequot, and Connecticut means long tidal river. So whether you want to visit one of the many New England coastal communities, the impressive architecture of Yale University in New Haven, or the hustle and bustle of the capital, Hartford, you're in for a treat. Pick some local berries and apples while you're there, meet some locals, and make the most of the nutmeg state. Did I mention how friendly people are there? Well. You're about to meet one of them. Natalie Sawicki is a singer-songwriter from Connecticut who lives in L.A. near me. And she's got to be one of the friendliest people on earth. I'm so happy she was willing to be on the show. Without any further ado, let's chat with her. Hi, everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everybody. We're back again today with another Discover a New State episode. And we're here with a good friend named Natalie. She's originally from Connecticut, Ooh, woo, <laughs> which was one of the original 13 colonies of the United States. Mm-hmm. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy you're here. I haven't met too many people from Connecticut before, and I'm so happy that You've been to our house so many times before, and now I feel like I can really connect with somebody from the state. Thank you so much. I love you guys so much. (laughs) It's great to be here. Yeah. So Natalie is a songwriter. Mm -hmm. She is often at our house because Lucas, as you guys know, is my husband, and he works with music. So Natalie is here often. They're writing a lot of pop songs. Mm -hmm. Would you say that pop is your genre? Yeah, pop is our main genre for sure. Yeah. How long have you been songwriting for? So I've been doing music my whole life. I learned piano as a kid and wrote songs that way. And in high school, I got really into songwriting that way. And then I went to college for business and did music business. And then during the pandemic, started making songs and learning to produce myself and just moved out to L.A. a year and a half ago to pursue it professionally. I didn't know you produced yourself. Not too well at all. (laughs) But that's how I kind of learned to songwrite on my own. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah. Uh, And so normally when you're writing with Lucas, do you also take part in the production process? Not really. There's been times where I've played piano here and there, stuff like that. I'm decent at piano. I'm worse at guitar, but I can play both. And I've always learned how to write writing on both. So, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. 
about two years ago. No, was it was it two years ago that Lucas met you? Now, no, one yeah, year, ago. a little less than two. Yeah, a year and a half. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was at the very, very beginning of a program that they did in L.A. And I remember Lucas sent a song home. I think it was the second week. Second week, yes. A song called Flames. Yes. <laughs> and I just thought, this girl is an artist. You have a beautiful voice. Thank you so much. So if it all fails with songwriting, right, we'll you've see. got, you should be on the radio. That I know for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll get the songs out somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, so today we're going to be talking about Connecticut, the state, and Natalie's experience growing up there. Before we dive into that topic, I have two other questions that I'd like to ask her because, yeah, I want to know. Okay. <laughs> the first one is, what is your favorite book? Oh, that's a really good question. Oh, I have to say this is a little basic, but Harry Potter just always had a huge place in my heart growing up. I have two older sisters. And as we were growing up, the books were being released in real time. So it was just such a fun experience to go. We literally used to go to like, they had midnight book parties yes. at Borders and Barnes Noble. And we were frequent attendees of those. And when the seventh book came out, my mom literally was like, I'm going to have to get you guys each your own copy because we would fight over the books when they came out. And none of us wanted to take our turn. So Harry Potter, I have to say, even though it's not a unique one, but it still holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> yeah. Is that what got you into reading chapter books? Because I hear that's a common series for people to really get into reading and yeah. getting immersed into a storyline. I think so. And I think the coolest part about that series is that I feel like as the books progress, they get more challenging to read. So the first one is kind of less challenging to read and I think the least challenging to read it's I think maybe Lengthwise the shortest yeah. yeah but then they get a little bit more challenging the topics get a little bit more adult as the characters grow up from 11 to 17 so like I read them around those ages like when I was 11 and kept getting older so it, it just was a cool way to grow with reading yeah, I think it's funny that you mentioned Barnes & Noble parties yes. because I was part of those too. <laughs> Apparently, it's something that's across the United States. I guess so. Yeah. It was a big deal at the time. Yeah. It was and like, everyone dressed up here. Yeah, they were like teasers. I remember for the seventh book, there was like a whole thing where people didn't know if Snape was going to be like good or bad in the end. And they like had these promotional bookmarks that like on one side, it was like the reason Snape was good. And on the other side, oh, it was like the funny. reason Snape was bad. We were very into it. So good. I loved it. And I also had my cape. Oh, I'm not yes. gonna lie. I had a wand, so yes. <laughs> we have a whole outfit together. <laughs> yeah. And it's great actually. Barnes and Noble, we go often here yeah. as well. And it's they still store. have so much Harry Potter stuff and everything nowadays. Yes. You know, even children's books that are designed for kids so that they can actually follow along with the story. They're oh, so wow. fat because the books are already so long. That's really smart. I didn't know yeah. that. Oh, that's pretty cool. I love that. The last question I have for you is what is your favorite place in the United States? Oh, that's a is really good LA? question. <laughs> I mean, I do love L.A. I've only been here a year and a half, but it's so, so beautiful. But I honestly, I do love Connecticut. It will always have a special place in my heart. I also lived in New York City for a while, so I love New York City and I went to college there. So it's just such a fun place to be. And there's so many things to do in that area. So that wasn't really a concise answer. But. I love that. OK, so Connecticut and New York is where you spent most of your life. Yes. Yes. From childhood to adulthood or did you? Yes. So I was born in Connecticut and then I actually moved to Pennsylvania for a few years when I was a child. My dad got a job there. And then when I was four years old, we moved back to Connecticut and then I lived and grew up in the same town all the way from kindergarten through high school. And then I graduated high school in Connecticut and I went to a school called Fordham University in New York City for college. For design? Is Fordham design? or No, there's a few. They might have a design program, but it's a liberal arts school. So I went to business school actually at Fordham. Business school. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> a little bit of a pivot. Yes. No, that's <laughs> to probably going to help you with yeah. your work here too. I feel like business is a great background no matter what yes. you go into. So. so yeah, I was a marketing major. It was communications and media management. And then I was a music minor. Okay. So yes. you were in New York for three to four years then. Yeah. I was there for all four years of university. I studied abroad in London for six months. And then I came back. And then postgraduate, I was a nanny actually for my cousin for a little bit. And we toured Europe together and went to Lebanon because I'm Lebanese. Amazing. And then <laughs> I came back to the States after a few months and I moved back to New York and I lived there for the next two, three years. Okay. Before coming out here. Yeah. Yeah. And now... Would you move back to Connecticut or to New York City? Oh, that's such a good question. Well, one of the cool things about Connecticut, actually, is that 
it's so small and it's so close to New York City that a lot of people live in Connecticut but work in New York City. So there's actually a train line that goes from New York City all the way into Connecticut that it's only like an hour long commute. So a lot of people will live in southern Connecticut and so you can kind of do both. So I think I would maybe do that. Maybe I'd live in Connecticut but work in New York City or be close enough to New York that I could do both. I love that about New York, that you have those nice trains and just the East Coast, I guess, in general, New yeah. England, like getting from one place to the other is just fairly easy and yes. close. And at least I believe I took Amtrak. I went up to Connecticut yeah. like, a long time ago. I went to Yale with a friend Fun. and walked around the campus. And to be frank, it was just shocking how beautiful the campus was. It's I felt like I was there. in Harry Potter. Literally, that's what it looks <laughs> like. Like the gothic buildings, the it's amazing, it's gorgeous, stained glass, books. It's incredible, yeah. Yeah, I just love the proximity and that you can do those sorts of things there. Yeah. Which, of course, coming from California, things aren't that easy. <laughs> no, it's such a big state compared to Connecticut. <laughs> yeah. So how big is it? I don't know the exact like miles or how big it is, but I know that you can pretty much drive throughout the whole state in two hours. So going from one corner to the other corner, like you can do the whole thing in less than three hours. Okay. And this is right above New York City. What's north of Connecticut? So Connecticut's bordered by Massachusetts to the north and then Rhode Island to the east. So yeah, that whole New England area. And so those were your stomping grounds, like all of those states? Yes. Sort of? Yeah. I've been um, like around the center, the north kind of central part of Connecticut. So I was about 30 minutes outside of the capital city, which is Hartford. But a lot of people say that my kind of area of Connecticut or Connecticut in general is just a good midway point between Boston and New York City. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So a lot of people have work in either Boston or New York, but live in Connecticut. A lot of people who grow up in Connecticut end up going to university in either Boston or New York just because they're both close and they both have so many universities. So, well, that's very true. You, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of great, prestigious universities right in that little pocket. There. Yeah, yeah. You have Harvard, you have Yale, you have Boston University, you have New York University, you have Boston one College, science one. What's the science MIT. One? MIT. Yes, my cousin went there. You have, yeah, so many different good schools just within. Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New York alone. Right. Well, on that topic, I'm curious. I actually was thinking about this earlier yeah. today. In California, when you are from the state of California, when you're a resident, you can pay less for university tuition yeah. than someone who is from a different state mm-hmm. or someone that is from a different country. And in Connecticut, can you go to Yale for like a reasonable price? I don't know about Yale. I do know. So Connecticut has a few state universities. They have Central Connecticut State University, but they also, UConn is our big state school, the University of Connecticut. So the nickname is UConn. It's just the letter U and then (laughs) C-O-N-N. But yeah, UConn's a big school there. It's probably, besides Yale, it's probably the biggest university in Connecticut. And you can get in-state tuition for UConn. And they have great academic programs. And so it's a really great, affordable option. They have a great medical school. Yeah, it's a great school. Wow. And I'm sure there's probably a very cute university town. I heard you yes. mentioned earlier today there's actually the cutest town in all of the United States and Connecticut. I think it was top 10. I don't know if it was the number one. I don't know what the ranking was. but Top yes. 10 is still really good. Yes. But yeah, UConn is actually in stores, Connecticut, which is actually kind of like farmland. So they have a big agricultural program there. Mm-hmm. And they also have their own creamery. So Ooh. it's really good. They have the Yukon ice cream is really, really good. Okay, their own cows. Yes, their they own. have their own cows. <laughs> and the people in the agricultural program like are involved in the process of, oh, wow. of making the ice cream. And it's really, really good. <laughs> okay, that is a good tip. I'll yes. add that to my notes, guys. So yes. Yukon Creamery. Yes, there's a name for it. Something Their mascot is the Husky, like the Husky dog. So uh-huh. the Yukon Huskies has something to do with that. But Okay. Yes. Which also brings to mind, I do want to talk about the small town really quick, the cute yes. town. Yes. But does it snow a lot? Because Huskies is an interesting mascot to, yeah. to have. I don't know if Huskies are native to Connecticut, to be honest, but it does snow in Connecticut a lot. Quite a bit. Especially in stores where Yukon is, there's a lot of snow there. The cool thing about Connecticut is you really get all four seasons. So because it's in the Northeast, you get snow, you get snowy winters, you get blizzards. But you also get hot summers that can be in 90 degrees Fahrenheit in the summertime and beautiful springs. So so is there an ideal time period that you would go to recommend to like a tourist? Yeah, I would honestly say autumn is the best time. Okay. So the trees, we have beautiful trees in Connecticut and 
they're all the kinds of trees that change foliage. So you get these beautiful colors of mm. oranges, reds, yellows. And around October, I think they actually every year they estimate what they call peak season is going to be. And it's like the two weeks in the fall where most of the trees are changing because they all change at slightly different times. But there's two weeks every October that they call peak. And that's when the majority of the trees are red, orange, and yellow. And everything just is gold and beautiful. Is it overwhelming with tourists there at that time? Connecticut tourism can be pretty quiet just because a lot of people don't know. A lot of people think of New England mm -hmm. tourism as Vermont or New Hampshire, yeah. kind of as we were talking about. But it's beautiful. A lot of people come during that time of year just to see the fall foliage. And where would you recommend going to see the fall foliage? Honestly, the entire state has it. There's so many different areas. There's in Southern Connecticut, there's Litchfield is a big destination mm -hmm. for fall foliage. But where I'm from is a town called Avon and the mm -hmm. Farmington Valley is the group of towns in that area. And there's beautiful foliage there. Okay. Yeah. And then Collinsville. Yes. That's the name of the small town yes. that you're talking about yes. that is in the top 10 of most beautiful cities in the U.S.? Yes. So I grew up right next to this little town called Collinsville. And apparently it was ranked one of the top 10 most cute towns, I think, or something <laughs> like that in the U.S. And it's really adorable. It actually started as an axe factory was there and they made Collinsville. Collins, I think, was the last name of the man who owned this axe factory. Mm -hmm. And everyone in the town worked at this axe mill. And that's now been shut down for years and years. But they still have the mill and it's on the river. The Farmington River is one of the big rivers in Connecticut. There's like two big rivers in Connecticut. And that runs through Collinsville and they used to have a mill. So where there used to be the mill and the factory, they've now converted into little storefronts. And there's one main street. They have a Halloween parade every year. Oh, I was just going to say axe, like an axe yeah. parade. <laughs> no axe parade. Something parades, really no. frightening inside of that old no, axe no. factory. <laughs> but there's really cool like metals and unique things about the town just because it had the people that made the axes there, I guess. Okay. But yeah, there's a really cute farmer's market there every single Sunday. And my family used to go every weekend in the summer. There was live wow. music, local farms in Connecticut. There's a lot of great farmlands there. What grows in Connecticut? Because I know upstate New York, there's a lot of apples yeah. and there's a lot of apple picking, even like a short distance away from New York City. Is it similar? Yes. Yeah. We have apple picking in Connecticut too. We used to go in the fall all the time. There's an orchard not too far away that you could drive to and pick apples. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of berries grow. There's a uh, pumpkin. So there's a farm in my town called the Pick and Patch. Pick and Patch. Yes. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> and me and my friends used to go every fall and go pick pumpkins, get apple cider donuts, enjoy the fall foliage. And yeah, it's really fun. You can go pick your own berries in the summer and pick your own pumpkin in the fall. Oh, I love that. I love the farms that convert from one yeah. thing to another. There used to be one in Germany that I used to go oh, to that fun. was asparagus oh. and blueberries. Oh, that's <laughs> And so I'm unique. like, okay, yeah, <laughs> very different, but I loved it. Yeah. For me, it's such a fun activity to spend time outside. And then when you get your, I mean, after the, all the hard work, you bring whatever it is Yeah, home. you're so proud of it. It tastes so much better that way. <laughs> yeah, and then you can make some pies, I mean, with the berries yes. or with oh. the apples. Mm -hmm. Amazing. That's so great. Yeah. And just so people are aware, a pumpkin patch is a place, it's a farm where there are, I mean, just a bunch of pumpkins growing. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times they have a petting zoo yeah. or there are sometimes games mm -hmm. even, like bobbing for apples, yes. where you stick your head in a big bucket of water. And I guess the point is to take the apples out with your teeth. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny game. But yeah, I think autumn and fall are just a big time in areas where the leaves change and yeah. They grow pumpkins, and it's just like a fun way to celebrate a location to go and celebrate yeah. the fall as a pumpkin patch. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's sort of the idea I get in my mind when I think of New England. And New England, for you guys listening, is, would you describe it as just everything sort of north of New York, or how would you? Yeah, I think technically it's basically the northeast region of the United mm -hmm. States. So Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. Maine. All of those states are kind of usually grouped in together in what's called New England. Okay. And so then that fall season in New England is usually something that we hear about on the West Coast, too. Yes. Like, that's the time to visit. And Absolutely. The pictures that you see online, they're probably from one of those areas, yes. New Hampshire or Vermont or maybe even from Connecticut. Yes, it's beautiful. It's a great time of year, too, because the weather, it drops from the summertime. So it gets mm -hmm. a little chillier, but it's always still warm enough to be outside and be doing things. You just kind of need a light jacket, maybe a scarf, but it's not too cold to be yeah. outside, which makes it fun too. Yeah. Did you watch 
the movie Hocus Pocus. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that, an, that is oh yeah <laughs> I, that is another one that comes to mind when I think of. East yes. Coast. I am assuming it takes place on the East Coast. Yeah, but... I think it takes place in, it's supposed to be like Salem, Massachusetts or something okay. like that. I so, could be wrong about that. But which yeah. is not far away from no, you. No, probably then. like an hour or two drive from Connecticut. So See, I'm forcing yeah. a road trip. <laughs> yes. Right? Massachusetts. You can hit up Salem, Massachusetts. Remember mm-hmm. the Salem Witch Trials? Mm-hmm. And you can hit up all of the spots for, oh, Ben and Jerry's ice cream. You could go oh, to Vermont yes. oh, for yes. that. You can start in Maine and you can get really good blueberries in Maine. Okay. Didn't mm-hmm. know that. I've heard of lobster, but oh, yes. blueberries. blueberries is also really big in New England. I think Maine specifically is known for blueberries. So blueberries. Just pancakes. fresh blueberries? Fresh blueberries too? Yes. Or just- yeah, they grow fresh blueberries in Maine. It's like a big thing. And then Vermont is known for maple syrup. So these are all the New England delicacies. Lobster, yeah. blueberries, maple Ooh, syrup. Yes. <laughs> yes all Love big it. in Connecticut as well, just because it's so close to all of those. So is there something that you would try, some sort of like cuisine that, I mean, just people should know about if they're coming to Connecticut? Mm, Honestly, the first thing that comes to mind, we already talked about it, but is ice cream. Because I think there's a lot of farms and a lot of dairy farms, there's Mm -hmm. just great ice cream. (laughs) So there's another farm near where I lived called Toll Meadow Farm. It's a little small family owned farm in a town called Simsbury, Connecticut. And they have amazing homemade ice cream. So just a really good just dairy products. And then there's actually a famous farm in Connecticut called Arethusa Farms. They are in southern Connecticut, I think in Litchfield County. And another dairy farm that makes like really, really good butter, really, really good Ooh. cheese, really, really good ice cream. And it's like considered to be a delicacy there. So they sell it at like all the really expensive grocery stores, carries Arethusa Farms. Arethusa Farms butter is found in a lot of like really nice New York restaurants now too. It was started by two guys who I believe worked in fashion in New York and then they moved to Connecticut, opened their own farm (laughs) and like made this incredible dairy farm, Arethusa Farms, or bought it from a family or something like that, Mm -hmm. took it over. It's a cool story. I have to look into it, but incredible dairy. Love it. Love it. So if you're lactose intolerant, bring your pills. Yes. <laughs> you're going to get a big stomach ache exactly. if you don't prepare. Exactly. <laughs> that is hilarious. So you mentioned something previously. Mystic Seaport. Does that ring a bell? Yes. Mystic Seaport. That's another great spot in Connecticut. So there's just a seaport in the southern side of Connecticut. So Connecticut is on the water of the United States. But it's blocked by a piece of New York called Long Island, which is this peninsula branching off from New York. And it blocks the water coastline. So there's beaches in Connecticut, but we don't get a lot of waves or anything like that. It's very calm waters because the land of Long Island blocks it. That's great for water skiers. And and yeah, it was a big port, I think, back historically Mm -hmm. in the day. So there's a really cool seaport called Mystic, and it's a really fun little beach town in Connecticut. So I know you're really close to your sisters yes. and your family. It sounds like you have like a little a pod. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that when you go home, it's just like a very familial, yeah. Yeah, like close situation. Yes. Did you used to travel with them to these places, like to yeah. the port and yeah. walk around? And so stuff? my mom was born and raised in Connecticut. So she was born and raised in a town called West Hartford, right next to the capital, mm-hmm. Hartford. And then my dad grew up in New York, but he moved to Connecticut when mm-hmm. he was in his mid-20s and then met my mom and they decided to get married and have kids there. So they know pretty much everywhere in Connecticut. They would take us to Mystic. They would take us there. And my mom actually went to UConn undergrad. So she showed you the ice cream. (laughs) Yes. And my dad went to UConn for business school. So they're big and used to teach at UConn for a little bit as well. So they just are big Connecticut people and know all the good little spots. That's great. And would you call someone from Connecticut a Connecticutian. <laughs> what do you want to say? What's the term? It's a funny joke between people who live in Connecticut because no one really knows what we're supposed to be called. Okay. <laughs> Supposedly, if you look it up on the internet, people say Connecticutians is apparently a Whoa. term. I don't, I've never heard anyone actually use You're that. You're a Connecticutian. <laughs> we're also called the nutmeg state. Every state in the U.S. has like a phrase and ours is the nutmeg state, I, I guess, because no we used idea. to grow up. I have honestly no idea why it's called that. So there's something to do with like there's some people have said like the nutmeg people or something like that. But I've never heard of either of those. So I don't really know Hmm. what you call us. (laughs) It's 
<laughs> I'm thinking about it now. Like, what could be the reason for that? I don't know. Do you guys have mold wine that you put in at Megan or I something? I mean, we do have mold wine in the fall. Another good fall yeah. delicacy. Nice. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. So that's a funny one. I like it, though, because nutmeg brings like this comforting, warm, like yeah. holiday feeling. Yeah. As a spice. Yeah. And so I guess it's a good thing. Yeah, I think because Connecticut's a place that can have a cold fall and winter. It's just we have pumpkins, we have wine. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I like. Yeah. So here, I mean, we have that sort of stuff, too. But I think you kind of lose the feeling when it's hot outside. Yeah. <laughs> You're like... <laughs> Here I am at a pumpkin patch, but I'm in shorts and a tank top. exactly. We're a big fall and winter state. Also, like, our big sport is basketball, even Mm -hmm. though... So, Connecticut is a unique state in that because it's so small and because it's in between cities like Boston and New York, we don't really have our own major sports teams. So, our NFL team is technically the New England Patriots, but they're really based in Massachusetts. And then... We don't have a baseball team. We have the Yankees and the Red Sox are New York and Boston. And New York has football teams as well. So the Celtics are Boston and New York has the Knicks, the Knicks and the Brooklyn Nets. So we don't have our own NBA, NFL, MLB teams at all. But UConn has incredible basketball programs and they're really known for doing well in the tournaments. Mm-hmm. So we are only like national sports team. We have a WNBA team, the Connecticut Good. Sun, because <laughs> the UConn women's basketball team are incredible. So that's another fun thing to do in Connecticut is to go to a college basketball game because they're really, really good teams. See, but yeah. <laughs> It doesn't mean that they're not good at sports. It means yes. that the other states are stealing them yes, exactly. when they're ready to make their team. Exactly. So, <laughs> you guys are good. Did you do any sports in high school? I did field hockey. Field hockey's big in New England. <laughs> field Just hockey. Funny. Yes. Can you describe what that is exactly? Field hockey, it's similar to ice hockey in that you have a hockey stick, but they use a ball instead of a puck, and then you play it on the grass. Like how big of a ball? It's a small ball. If you know lacrosse, yeah, like a baseball size or a lacrosse ball size, Mm -hmm. and you hit it. The difference between ice hockey and field hockey is there's only one side of the stick you can hit the ball with, so you have to flip the stick over when you play, but I played field hockey. And then I played basketball growing up, too. My dad's a huge basketball fan huge UConn women fan because the women actually for a few years were better than the men Uh they had like a crazy winning streak they won 89 games in a row a few seasons it was a huge deal in Connecticut love that yeah love that basketball really cool basketball okay (laughs) and are there any famous people we would know from Connecticut hmm okay I know John Mayer the musician John Mayer yes great one he's from Fairfield Connecticut which I mentioned before I'm from Fairfield California so We're like brother, sister. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. My sister actually went to Fairfield University. So, you know, that area. But if you guys are coming to the United States, I suggest going to Fairfield, Connecticut and not Fairfield, California, (laughs) because my city that I grew up in is like really. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm trying to think. Honestly, I don't know a lot of other notable figures besides John Mayer. That's good. He's a big one. He's a good one. Yeah. I'm sure there's others I'm missing. Yeah. We have one last thing I do want to ask you about. Actually, two other things. Hiking. Yes. Okay, so you play field hockey. Yes. You like watching basketball with your dad. Yes. <laughs> These are good things. And yeah, hiking. Yes. There's a lot of nature in Connecticut. Do people just walk outside and suddenly they're in the forest? Yeah. <laughs> or are there just rivers everywhere? There's yeah. water everywhere, beach that's really calm. Yes. It- yes. So Connecticut has a lot of great foliage, as I discussed, but it's very hilly. So there's a lot of really good places to hike, just walk around. There's paths along the river. We used to learn how to ride bikes along the Farmington River path, but there's great hiking trails all over Connecticut. And there's one that we used to go to a lot. There's a tower called Hubline Tower that was built in Simsbury, Connecticut. It's this historical tower, a family, a wealthy family in Connecticut built it at the top of a hillside and it's a historical site and you can hike up to it. So there's lots of different beautiful mountains. And my house in Connecticut is near a set of mountains called Sweetheart Mountain. So there's a reservoir. So none of the mountains are like super high elevation, but they're just frequent. When you drive through Connecticut, a lot of times you're driving through windy countryside roads and hilly areas, which makes the foliage even more pretty because if you can hike up to one of the top of one of these mountains, you just get a really pretty view of all the foliage too. So people hike up to Hubline Tower. Hubline, it's hard to say. (laughs) Yeah, it's weird. It's H-E-U. So it's Hue's how you say it. I wonder if that's German because yeah, H-E-U is hey in German. Yeah, or it might be H-U. I'm not completely sure. (laughs) 
<laughs> but yes, Hugh Blind Tower is okay. a really good hiking path. It's not too challenging, but it's steep. And then you have a beautiful view at the top. So when the trees change colors, you might get your perfect shot from yes. up there. And you said also people could walk in to that tower, yeah. right? Isn't it sort of an open residence? Yeah. Or? So it's actually a preserved historical site. There's like a community in the area that helps preserve it. And you can walk through it like a museum. So they have it all preserved. The bedrooms look like bedrooms. All the rooms look like how it did when the family lived there. And mm -hmm. it's like a very interesting little museum, a historical site. Yeah. And at the top, there's a 360 lookout and you can see they it's really cool. They have a map. You can see like, oh, I'm actually looking at Massachusetts. I'm looking at Connecticut. Oh, I'm I looking at that. Rhode Island from all the different angles. It's really cool. That's true because you can probably see all of them. Yeah. Because you're there. high enough up. It's really weird. like in How that general cool direction, that? at least. Yeah. <laughs> You said Rhode Island is right next to you too, right? Yes. Yeah. To the east of borders. So there is this guy that I follow on Instagram called Keel James Patrick or ooh, something like that. Ooh. Some fancy okay. name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And he has a clothing company ooh. where most of the clothes are very preppy. Yes. Like there's a lot of pearl necklaces and earrings. There's a uh, sort of long cashmere sweaters with, I don't even know what you call yes. it, like a blouse underneath where like the collar is folded yes, down. Yes. And that is also something that I think of when I think of that area yes. of the United States. Do people dress in a very preppy manner? They do. Connecticut's an interesting place because I actually read a statistic once. I don't know if it's still true, but it has like the biggest wealth disparity, like biggest wealth gap. So there's a lot of really wealthy people in Connecticut and there's a lot of really not wealthy people in Connecticut, but there's not a lot of in between. So there's a lot of like preppy kind of attitudes, I think, because a lot of people work in one of the major cities and come live there. Mm. But there's a very, yeah, preppy kind of like old fashioned yeah. sense. I think it comes from like the whole New England, just kind of like energy of it being super historical. Yeah. I don't know. People have ancestors that were like, literally came like we're at the beginning of the United States. Like, right. So, so they decide, oh, I'm still going to ride a sailboat. Yeah, and, exactly. like I know how to sail, actually. Right. Like <laughs> Mystic Seaport is like a big sailing thing. And a lot of people yeah. have like the Cape Cod is not in Connecticut, obviously, but it's a big Right. Vacation it's in Massachusetts, spot. right? Yeah, it's a big mm -hmm. vacation spot for people in Connecticut. So Rhode Island and Cape Cod are big preppy summer areas. And I think that like whole preppy kind of aesthetic seeps in. Vineyard Vines is a really big fashion brand out there. Have you ever heard of it? No. Their logo is like a little pink whale. Okay. And so the whole thing is like just like pink whales on everything. But it's like expensive, like colored shirts and pearls and all that kind of stuff. Lily Pulitzer also. I don't know if you know that brand. That's a no. big East Coast fashion, Connecticut, like upper middle class kind of <laughs> aesthetic. That's interesting. Yeah. I made this friend from Maine a long time ago, and she was saying, if you move here, you have to have these boots. And they're like rain boots that have... Hunter boots. Are they No, those it's ones? not hunter boots. Oh. It's the other ones that have like two colors to them. Oh. Or like with like the ties coming yes, up. Yes, yes, yes. What are those called? Oh, I should know this because people would wear them all the time, but I don't remember. But She's yeah. like, if you live here, you have to have <laughs> those. Otherwise, yeah. you don't fit in or Everyone something. Everyone in college like, what would have those about? boots. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And L.O. Bean is based in Maine. Yes. So that's another big one. You kind of have your like crunchy granola aesthetic and then you have your really preppy <laughs> collared shirt pearl aesthetic. And like those are like the two moods of a lot of people in Connecticut. <laughs> For the listeners, what does crunchy granola <laughs> aesthetic mean? I think it's people who are kind of big nature lovers. So they go camping a lot. They are wearing outdoor gear in their day-to-day mm. -day life. They're maybe wearing their boots or their... No shoes. Their sneak yeah, no <laughs> shoes, maybe, perhaps. Yeah, their rain jacket, all that. They're prepared for all of the weather at all times. Okay, so yes. these two communities don't really mix the crunchy granolas and the... They don't, but at the same time, they do in some parts okay. of Connecticut, I would say. <laughs> How funny. And which group did you fit in? I feel like I was kind of right in the middle because my dad's a big nature, like not really kind of preppy person at all. He's very grounded. He was an Eagle Scout. He loves to hike. So you know how to like light a fire. Yeah. He's stuff. always about like survival skills. Like yeah. that's the kind of guy he is. And then my mom grew up in Connecticut. Very like preppy. They were really hardworking and immigrant parents from Lebanon and owned a store. Like they came from nothing and came to Connecticut and worked there. But they really took pride in just like every aspect of their life. So even though when they didn't have a lot, they were still dressing like informal wear everywhere they went and stuff like that. Gotcha. So it was kind of just the attitude of like carry yourself highly, no matter kind of yes. where you are in life. Whereas my dad's from Queens, New York. His dad was a firefighter. There's just like the kind of two different 
So I was yeah. kind of honestly a product, I think, of a little yeah. bit crunchy granola, <laughs> New York City, and preppy, all blended that. into one. <laughs> I love that. I like these sorts of images. Like, I know they are sort of stereotypes. Yes. You know, that- <laughs> I don't know. Like, I guess stereotypes that sometimes creates the magic or the sort of yeah. essence of a place in that, you know, if I'm going to be dreaming of going to the East Coast and traveling to these places, totally. I, I'm like, I want to go see that sailor on the boat and like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wear the sweater <laughs> over your shoulders. Yes, yes. Just, exactly. <laughs> Just lean in. Yeah. Lean. <laughs> yeah. Connecticut has a lot of privilege and it creates an interesting culture sometimes for sure. But oh, God. good one. I love your words, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Word. What do we call someone like that's really good with words? Oh, I don't know. I'd like a to wordy think that way. Ooh, You're a wordy I like that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm honored. <All> right. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to share about Connecticut or your experience growing up in the state? I feel like I didn't get to hear stories from you like I should be trying to pull some more out of you (laughs) well it's just such a lovely area to grow up it's really Mm. quiet and there's a lot of great towns great schools great things to explore Mm. and I just had so much fun growing up and going to school there with my sisters my Mm. dad's a big nature guy so I know I've talked about it but Going on hikes was so much fun Mm -hmm. we used to ride bikes on the weekends as a family which was really fun just all of that is just great yeah does it feel like stars hollow it does. Okay, so yes. Stars Hollow is a reference to Gilmore Girls. Yes. And that's sort of this image I have in my mind of these sort of cutesy small towns it's in Connecticut. It's true. It's true. So Gilmore Girls is the show and Stars Hollow is the town. And supposedly it was based off of a real town in Connecticut that's not too far away. Really? But me and my friends used to joke around that it was based off of our town because we have a Luke's Donut and Coffee in my no. town and the logo <laughs> looks a lot like it so we used to be like oh my gosh are we Gilmore Girls like my sister was like I think it was us but it could be it could have been but supposedly the story is that it was actually this other town in Connecticut yeah, but whatever <laughs> I would like to believe in my heart that it was and my town is not as cute as Stars Hollow but Stars there are Hollow definitely, is like it's so tiny fabricated yes yeah, so <laughs> a little bit it's very walkable I believe because it's a television set yeah. but oh my gosh we have to go visit you yeah <laughs> Luke's Donuts has really good donuts by the way okay. if you're ever in Avon Connecticut <laughs> lovely Avon <laughs> on Connecticut. One last thing before I get you off this recording. What is the most exciting thing you've ever done? Ooh, honestly, ever is probably moving out to Los Angeles and crazy. (laughs) Yeah, I love New York with my whole heart. And I thought I would never, ever want to leave New York and Connecticut in that area because I just love New England. And as I've talked about, I'm a big fan. But when I heard about this program that I came out here to do, I was like, you know what? If I get in, I'm going to go. And I got in and I decided to go. So that was a pretty big risk. And I think (laughs) it worked out well for you because you now are an officially signed songwriter in Los Angeles. So you're here to stay. Yes, I am. I am. But I'll always be visiting Connecticut for the rest of my life. I know it. (laughs) And whenever Natalie has a first hit song, which is going to happen soon, (laughs) we're seeing signs. Yes. (laughs) I will post about that. So all of you can also listen to her music. Her voice is lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. It's been an honor. Yay. (laughs) Until next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Natalie. I told you she was friendly. (laughs) You can hear it in her voice, can't you? Anyway, if you'd like to know more about her adventures in Los Angeles and listen to her music as it's released, be sure to give her a follow on Instagram. You'll find her at Nat Sawicki, N-A-T-S-A-W-I-C-K-I. Hope you're having a nice day and enjoy it. Bye.